I'd like to introduce you to the Bohr family. That's Jaja Gabor, Ava Gabor, and the one on the end is just a Bohr. Hello guys, how are you? Hi, I'm Wendy Stewart, and it's my passion for fashion that brought me to Ethiopia. I was curious to see if the tribes in the Omo Valley felt the same way about fashion as people in the United States do. I know that sounds a little far-fetched, but I had seen pictures of them. So I came all the way to Ethiopia to find that out. It's hard to imagine in this day and age that you could find people that are still living so traditionally. With the Hammer Tribe, the women love to wear animal skins. Okay, not so politically correct where we are, but very politically correct for them. So I noticed the, the necklaces. Different necklaces mean different things. Right. So she has beautiful metal rings around her neck. She has two rings, which means she is the second wife. I think number one should have all the metal, but that's, that's just me, right? These beautiful girls that I'm here with are virgins and they're waiting to get married. So they don't have the other kind of necklace on. They're wearing these necklaces that have seashells. Yes. The hair on the women, they're, they're dreadlocks, dreadlocks, coated in clay. And they're mixed with butter. So clay and butter. It's like a, a natural way of conditioning their hair. But they, this is how they wear their hair every day. Every day. Every day. They also love to put paint on around their eyes. It was a kind of chalk. One thing that's changed with them though, they used to wear very little in the way of clothing. They'd body paint somewhat and they'd use adornment. And I noticed yesterday, you know, young girls that just, they had bras on that of course didn't fit them because they were nine years old, but they were wearing these bras as a sense of covering up, as a sense of modesty, not showing their bodies at all. <laughs> It's very exciting. We've been invited to the bull jumping ceremony. I, I, I can't believe this. It does not happen all that often. What are we seeing here? This is the first part of the ceremony and uh, people are whipping each other. Yes. Who's doing the whipping? The best man. Okay, so those are like the, the friends of the guy that's gonna jump the bull. Yes, okay, jump the bull, and then the what are the man. girls doing? The girls are now dancing and celebrating after they get whipped already. Okay, so they, got, they, they going, got whipped and now they're celebrating, got it. Yes, as you can see, they are going to have a coffee now. Okay. And a little bit of rest. So now, now we have coffee after all this. This is such so, an extraordinary ceremony. Then the church will go to the jump. Okay, so the jump happens next. In honor of the bull jumping ceremony, I was lucky enough to get painted with some of the traditional clay that people here use to paint themselves. I, I can't believe it. Okay, does this stuff come off? <laughs> it's never going to come off. I'm going to look like this forever. It's a real Wait, I want my makeup artist. Come here. Yeah, yeah come here. This it's I want to introduce you on camera. This is the guy that did my makeup. He's yeah. a, a real pro. He made me beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank What's you. your name? Mikis, Oh, that's hard. Mikhail. Mikis. Mikis. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Mikis. He. I think he did a really great job. <laughs> The pure amount of joy amongst the women as they danced around this boy that was going to go through this whole ritual of becoming a man, it's their own form of bar mitzvah, I guess. He'll get land, and, he'll get cattle, and, and an AK-47. And uh, an AK-47 because your future's not complete without an AK-47. And at last, a wife. And then, right, and then you get a wife. It's, all, it's all about money. Yeah. What, what the, it, right at the I end of the day, is there anything else? <laughs> like in so many cultures, it's really about the amount of cattle that you have. It matters, yeah. Right. So I guess Donald Trump has a lot of cattle. <laughs> That was a terrible joke. Don't, don't that in there. <laughs> Donald Trump must have a lot of cattle, right? Because he's so rich. Mm. But it is not up to me to question. I loved watching the ceremony, the commitment of the people, the energy, the singing, the dancing, and then of course the finale. The bar mitzvah boy comes out, he's butt naked, and he has to jump over the backs of eight bulls. That's right, eight bulls. And he has to do it three times. And you're there, and you're watching this, and you're thinking, what will happen if, if he doesn't do it? What will happen to him? Well, I heard the whole village laughs at him. He's humiliated. 
and then no girl wants to marry him. Oh, that's terrible. Did, yeah. Does that ever happen? Every now and then, huh? Once in a long time. Right. Okay, well, I hope that this guy's lucky. I hope he poof, makes it right over the boat. Our boy made it. I was so happy. I was cheering for him the whole way. I'm like, yes, jump over those bulls. So today, we're going to see the Caro people. Caro people. Caro. Caro. Caro, right? Caro. Caro. See, everybody's correcting me because I, I never get it right. Oh, it's okay. I, I had coffee, but thank you. He's the chief. He's the chief? Junior, junior. Junior chief? Yeah. I, I got to meet the junior chief. Pleased to meet you. Yes, yes, yes. 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 And all of a sudden, what you want my earrings? My cheap earrings? These are yeah. your jewelry is much nicer. <laughs> and now she wants my earrings. I only have one pair. I only have two pairs. <laughs> And then her girlfriend starts getting really angry. And then they start yelling at each other. And that's when it occurred to me, she wasn't giving these earrings back. She was going to keep them. So I said to my guide, I have to get my earrings back. So he starts talking with the woman. And she didn't want the other girl to have the earrings if she couldn't have them. But it was OK for me to have the earrings. And she looks at my guide and says, I really like her. I want to give her a goat. The Kara people are considered masters of body painting. Can you imagine? To get the word master, you have to be pretty good. And the kind of body painting they do is not permanent, but it is also very, very elaborate. In the Western world, when we body paint, we body ink, and often it's really permanent. But in this particular culture, they don't do it for permanence, but yet they'll put just as much effort into it. It amazed me how into fashion and beauty the men were in that village. I mean, they were all decked to the nines. And when you consider, for the most part, they spend their day taking care of cattle, that is really, really something. It's like, all dressed up, no place to go except to go take care of my cattle. So the women are also into intense beautification there, but not the kind that you would think. A number of the women I met had nails sticking out of their chin. Not a tiny little nail, not a stud, but a, I would say two inch nail in some cases. And that is actually considered a great sign of beauty in their culture. When they're young children, they put in a very tiny little nail. And then as they get older, it gets bigger and bigger. So we just got done shooting the Kara people, and um, this guy is so handsome, and he really shows the intricate paint that you can do and the designs. He's famous, I've been told, that his face is on many brochures, and I can believe that. So we finished our negotiations here. We have spoken with the chief's son, and we're making sure all the people are getting paid today. And that's really what it's about. Nobody should ever have their picture taken for free. It's income for people, and these people are certainly beautiful, and they've shared with us today. America. And, uh, it's, it's, America. You, America? American. American. American, right. Okay. Yes. <laughs> it says okay. American, okay. thumbs up. Okay. Yeah. So we arrive in another village to shoot the beauty of the people, and reality sets in. My guide came over to me, and he was very upset, and he said one of the elders in the village needed medicine. And I said, what's wrong with the man? And he said, well, there's nothing wrong with him, but his daughter has malaria. And this particular tribe, the only money they have is their cattle. 
and you can't pay for malaria medicine or malaria tests with a cow. We're here at the health center in Turkey. The little girl that we met in the village who has malaria, and although the Hammer people are very rich in battle, they don't have any money. So we've come here and we've agreed to pay the bill so that she gets treated. To be treated for malaria, $10. $10 makes a difference between malaria and dying. These people have mosquito nets. They don't use them. They use them to fish with or clothing. Okay, what's going on? Wait, he doesn't want the treatment? No, he likes Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh, good. Thank you. Okay, so she's going to get the treatment, yes? It's very hard for Westerners to understand, you know, get money for mosquito nets and try and help and these children die anyway. I'm sorry, I'm very upset right now. She's going to be okay? Yeah, yeah, she's going to be fine. So, what, tell me what they're going to do. They're going to give her a blood test? Blood test. Okay. And they know the, they will know the result in half an hour. Okay. And, and we can check it out after the market if you want to. What made her father so sure she had malaria? It's normal in the village. It's malaria normal. It's common. Like, it's, it, it happens every day, and, you know? But these so children die of malaria. Yeah, many children die because yeah. of malaria. So, what would make the difference? Obviously, the mosquito nets, if people aren't going to use them, are no, not going to. Right, because it's not part of their culture. Yeah, they don't they don't even know how to use it. Right. So we need to get rid of mosquitoes that right. have malaria. Right. Like they've done in other parts of the world. That's the only That's the only solution. All right, thank you. This morning I've come to the most aggressive and elaborate village here in the Omo Valley. I'm here with the Mercy people. I was told that the, the Mercy were aggressive, fierce, nasty, uh, just the worst, primitive people even said. But to be perfectly honest, they couldn't have been nicer. This is my wonderful scout. What is your name? Wow. Ah. Falecho, right? Falecho, right? And what's my name? Oh, Wenji. great. Wenji. No, Wendy. Right. Wendy. It can Wendy. be Wenji, that's, no. that's fine. <laughs> My husband shot a lot of pictures of their different dress, which is actually very beautiful. They use ram horns, pieces of shells, metal. They make clay plates that go through their lips. Originally, they started them because they were being stolen from males and villages in Kenya. The people here decided with the plates, maybe then the slave history would stop, and, and it did. So now it is a thing of beauty, it is also a thing of wealth. The bigger the plate, the more wealth, the more beauty the person has, and the more desirable she is as a wife. I guess to some people it might be a little intense, but I found it remarkably beautiful. And then I run into this gentleman who just completely blows my mind. Tell me, what's your name? Hi, my name is Ole Sarali Ole Bui. Okay, I'll never be able to say that, yeah, but... but you, I, will, I will give you. You're going to have to write it down for me. Yeah. But he is a documentary filmmaker, and he's made... How many, you, you've made one film so far? Only just a one film. You did a film that screened at the Margaret Mead Film Festival? Yes, wow. exactly. Oh. I went to New York ah, to, you were... uh, yeah, to show them my documentaries. So tell us the name of your film that you made. The, my film name is Shooting with Morsi. Shooting with Shooting mercy, with mercy. mercy yeah. about the mercy and about other tribes and about, about the thing, the land issues. The land issues, land right, issues. right. Yeah, so the show. And also the, my film, they won the prize, National Geographic headquarters in Get uh, out Washington, in Washington, D.C. <laughs> okay. So they won the prize. You're just completely, completely <laughs> blowing me away. He was taught English by an NGO and was given an opportunity for a Western education. When I finish uh, my education, I come back here to the my people. But, okay, but that's what's really interesting to yeah. me because, you know, you got your education, Western-style education, or, or education, like, and then you come back to your village. Yeah. What made you, like, not want to move to, like, the capital of Ethiopia? What kept you from going to a city? I really want to help my people. Right. The Morsi people, there are people who really love their own culture, to keep their own culture. Now the government is slowly trying to convince them to come to the education, to the farming, to change, become modern, to wear the Western clothes. 
Contact with modern society is a threat to the tribal way of life. The government, they don't understand how the pastoralists were indigenous, the way they like. Right. Someone, you know, first he writes things and plans things and go to the gifts the indigenous people. So I help the advise the government, advise the community. Right. To bring it together. You're, you're to, what we call understand. go between. Go between. You're a go between. Exactly. You have customs. Yeah. Okay, you have history. This is what you've done for how many years? Way of life for thousands of years. Thousands, of, many centuries. Right, so yeah. that all has to be respected. Yeah. The Mursi people, like other pastoralists, they have to change by themselves. Yes, Not someone that's, come to force that's exactly to right. Say, change it, change it, change it. Right, but yeah. they can change so by if, themselves example, with you. Yeah, like right. me. I really wanted people to be able to experience what I experienced in nine days there, shooting in these very remote places, capturing the beauty of a time that's not going to be here anymore. It's inevitable that the way of life for these people is going to come to an end. It's happening all over the world. Please come back, back again. I, I will be back again and we said and we're going to say, say hi to people in uh, Yeah, in New, in, York. in New York. Hello everybody in Hello, New York. Hello. Wait, did you ride the subway in New York? Yes. No! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> but you see, you look with what we call fresh eyes. Yeah, the fresh eyes. It's like I come here, I have fresh eyes. Today I'm going back to New York City and I'm going to miss Ethiopia. The tribal people here are like a lot of the birds I've seen. Beautiful colorful and just plain lovely.